Legacy! It's more than just remembering. Thinking back to your childhood, how many games did you play that weren't of your time? Did you play Sonic in Sonic Mega Collection? Did you download Super Mario Bros. from the Wii Virtual Console? Did you play Master System games on your Mega Drive or Genesis using this chunky old converter thing? I think the industry would be a lot healthier if instead of always looking forward, we took the time and looked back at what's already happened. Because good games are always good games. Backwards compatibility is no new thing. Whether it's playing Game Boy games on your Game Boy Advance or shoving a GameCube disc into a Wii, it allows consoles to be so much more than just themselves. Every one of the big three has embraced it at one point or another, but the problem is, it's not as simple as just putting a disc in and having it magically work. Some consoles, like the PlayStation 2, have unique hardware specifically for allowing PlayStation games. And while the 60GB chunky PS3s did the exact same thing for PlayStation 2, it was too costly for every PS3 and so the feature was very quickly dropped. GameCube, Wii and Wii U have the benefit of sharing extremely similar architecture. Heck, the Wii U can even play native GameCube games, just like the Wii. So why didn't Nintendo sell us GameCube games on the eShop? I don't know. They could've? But with PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, consoles became far more like modern PCs. PS5 playing PS4 games is relatively easy, but bringing over games built for another era of hardware seemed pretty much impossible. PS4 didn't have native backwards compatibility at all. Sure, there were a few emulated PS2 classics, but it never reached its true potential. And while PS5 is starting to embrace the past, we're looking more at pretty typical emulation, with PlayStation 3 being streamed. But halfway through the Xbox One's life, they did something extremely unexpected. Xbox's backwards compatibility was a monumental effort. It's nowhere near as straightforward as just playing Xbox games on 360. Without rewriting or remastering, getting anything older to work on Xbox One just shouldn't have been possible. But through a ton of work, here we are. They had to manually bring support to each game one by one, and thus there are a few gaps. Let me play Sonic 06, you cowards. But now there are 632 360 games playable on Xbox One and the series consoles, and also 63 original Xbox games. And because of the effort put into these, they play very differently to how other consoles play older games. Like a Wii U plays Wii games just like a Wii would. But here, it's more like a PC. It's less that your Series X becomes a 360, but more like your 360 games are playing on your Series X. Natively, they're utilizing the additional power. And some of them have even been enhanced to 4K, 60fps, or 120fps. But with so many games, you're gonna need a place to store them. This segment was made possible by our friends over at WD Black. I need more space for Sonic Unleashed! Of course you do! And that's where WD Black has your back with the WD Black D30. The WD Black D30 is light, compact, small, and most importantly, quiet. Hear that? You don't hear a darn thing. It's as simple as it could possibly be. Take the USB-C cable, uh -huh. plug it into the SSD and the Xbox. Uh -huh. Not only is it a diddy little thing, but it's crazy fast too. You're looking at speeds of up to 900 megabytes a second, and that's perfect for any game in the legacy lineup. We're talking Xbox, Xbox 360, and Xbox One games all shoved into one little box. And you can archive your Xbox Series X and S games as well. What's more, these are on the Western Digital Official Store, in 500GB, 1TB, and even 2TB variants. You even get 3 years warranty! And this works with just about anything that accepts SSDs. You can use it on your PlayStation 5, and heck, I'm using it to store this video! The WD Black D30 is a must-have for anyone building an impressive legacy library, and it would even make an awesome gift for PC gamers. I installed Minesweeper on it. One of the biggest upgrades for this generation was leaving hard drives behind in favor of SSDs. So while backwards compatibility for Xbox has been around since Xbox One, Series X brings big upgrades. Let me show you what I mean. Here's one of my favorite original Xbox games, Panzer Dragoon Auto. Here it is running on the OG Xbox, and it takes around 7 seconds to load, which isn't bad. It's enough time to hydrate yourself, but over on Xbox Series X, I'm never gonna be hydrated again! Pretty much every original Xbox game doesn't visibly load anymore. Here's another one of my favorites, the Atogi series by From Software. I blinked, did it happen? Morrowind's a really funny one, where it had massive load times on the original hardware. We're talking over a minute to start a new game, and even on 360, it, it took longer than that. 
A funny trick it had too was to clear the RAM, sometimes the console itself would reboot. It doesn't tell you that, just behind the scenes it's rebooting as it loads. But anyway, here it is loading on Xbox Series X! I mean, 5 seconds is longer than most OG Xbox games, but compared to what it was originally, there's no comparison. And 360 games get the exact same improvement. Remember in GTA 4, before the game even got to a visible load screen? It would shuffle through four very slowly panning pieces of art. Well now, you will never see the lady with the lollipop. Only Nico. The orange box was a slow old thing on 360, with Half-Life 2 load zones taking around 14 seconds. It just pauses the entire game in that time. But over on Series X... Phew, that's nothing! We can show improvements all day, but The Witcher 2, this was a slog on 360, but now the game doesn't even care if you read the text on the load screen, just get out of here! What this does is it allows us to go back and appreciate the games we loved, but without being tethered to the restrictions of the era. A lot of these games would pretty much qualify as remasters. If Sega said we're selling Sonic Generations to you again, but it's 4K and 60fps now, would you buy it? Cause that's already here. Like the Ratchet & Clank Collection, they're pretty much the same PS2 games but in 720p. Or the Metal Gear Solid HD Collection, which is backwards compatible. These are also pretty much the same games but in 720p. Not to undermine the work put into these, especially with Peace Walker, that was awesome. But a lot of the Xbox efforts not only mirror the results of actual remasters, but in many cases, you already own them. The Ninja Gaiden trilogy released last year, but if you own Ninja Gaiden Black that released 17 years ago, there's little need to buy it. You can slide your old Xbox disc in and play a 4K version of the original Ninja Gaiden Black. And yeah, 4K! On top of enabling general compatibility, some games were given special treatments. It started during the Xbox One X era, where some games like the Orange Box went from 720p on 360 to a full 4K. But recently, they also introduced FPS boost on series consoles, where the frame rate gets doubled. So the 30fps Fable Anniversary became 60fps, and games that were already 60, like Hollow Knight and Titanfall, became 120fps. Hell, some games already had the 4K update from One X, like Sonic Generations and Mirror's Edge, and they got FPS boost too, making them 4K 60. That's really awesome. Series consoles also have a new feature called Auto HDR that converts any game that predated HDR into a pretty much native HDR picture. It doesn't get talked about too much, but man, this feature rocks like flip. But I'm sure some of you are saying, PCs have been running Sonic Generations at 4K60 and loading GTA 4 fast for years. What are you getting at, John? You fraud! And yeah, it's true, I am a fraud. But I don't believe PCs doing this for years makes this any less cool. But still, it really shines with the stuff that never came to PC. Red Dead Redemption is a big one. The code for the game is notoriously messy, so if a remaster ever happens, it's going to take a lot of effort. But who cares? It pretty much already got remastered. Not only is it playable on Series X, but it runs at 4K and looks absolutely stunning. While it didn't get FPS boosted, another huge thing about backwards compatibility is the hardware just kind of brute forces its way through regardless. Like, Red Dead has a 30 FPS cap, but on Series X, it never leaves 30. And that certainly wasn't the case on 360. If you actually look back at a lot of games on PS3 and 360, it wasn't exactly an era that focused on performance. A lot of games aimed for 30, but much of the time they'd stay in the 20s. This makes GTA 4 really interesting, as unlike Red Dead, there was no patch, this game isn't 4K, it's still 720p. But it actually had an unlocked frame rate on 360, so what you're seeing right here is 60fps GTA 4. And if you're curious, 360 never came anywhere near that. It mostly sat in the 20s. This makes another console exclusive incredibly cool, Sonic Unleashed. When Series X first came out, it managed to keep Sonic Unleashed locked at 30fps the entire time, which was incredible, as some later levels turned 360 into a slideshow. It took two console generations, but consoles finally caught up with Sonic Unleashed. But then, they went further. Now, unlike Generations, Unleashed is still 720p, but still, making this game 60fps? It's a huge deal. This game has no PC version. There's definitely PC fan projects that we make and port these levels over to Generations, but that's not the same as the entire game. FPS boost is so damn cool, and for many, having Sonic Generations at 60fps and Red Dead at 4K is a legit reason to buy a Series X. Just to list off others, we have the Banjo games in 4K, Left 4 Dead in 4K, Oblivion at 4K60, The Witcher 2 is 4K, The Splinter Cell series is 4K, Final Fantasy XIII is pretty much 4K, and these ones actually got some very special treatments. 
You might remember how this was originally going to be a PS3 exclusive, and there was a little bit of bitterness over a 360 version even existing. What, is it going to run on 32 discs? <laughs> no, 3! But even running across 3 discs, there were compromises. It was 576p rather than 720p, and to get everything onto discs, there was some pretty heavy compression in all pre-rendered scenes. The big thing here is not only is it now 1728p, which is another strange number, but they actually went back and updated the pre-rendered scenes. Here's the bigger deal though, the PC version didn't do that. The PC version's pretty poor all around, but the cutscenes appear to be from 360. So without any mods on, out of the box, the Xbox version, which was the worst by a significant amount, is now the definitive way to play Final Fantasy XIII. And if you're into Japanese games, there's actually quite a lot of interesting stuff here. The early 360 days had some strange exclusives like Death Smiles and Dodon Patchy Resurrection. Now, these two aren't backwards compatible, but Microsoft themselves published two RPGs from Miss Walker. Blue Dragon, which had art by Akira Toriyama and still looks great, and Lost Odyssey, both written by Sakaguchi. If you didn't love Final Fantasy XIII at the time and told the world about this every day, you should have been playing Lost Odyssey instead. It's one of the best traditional RPGs of that generation, and both of these work great on Series X. There aren't really any improvements just looking at them, but they do inherently load faster. Not really a massive deal as these games didn't really take long to load anyway, but you're shaving off around 2 to 3 second load times per encounter, and when you see the screen like a thousand times in your playthrough, that time adds up. It just makes the whole thing flow a lot better. Play Lost Odyssey. Beautiful Katamari is another cool one too. Completely 360 exclusive, never been ported, boom, play it right here. A lot of modern games don't really support local play either, and so here the Legacy Library does a bunch of heavy lifting. The Time Splitters series is backwards compatible, and hey, they're better than whatever shooter people are playing right now. And unlike any other console version, Sonic and All Stars Racing Transformed is now 60 FPS. Although the first game with Banjo Kazooie is not backwards compatible, and that is a crime! And Left 4 Dead! It's 4K and stays locked to 30, even in split screen. There's clearly a lot of good in here, but I think what makes this even more interesting is many of these games predate Xbox. They didn't go through the 8-bit, 16-bit, 32-bit, or 64-bit eras. They just started in well-defined 3D. However, with each console generation, every system offers a look into the past. But then with the next console, that's undone, and they start again from scratch. Like, there are different versions of Sonic 1 for PS2, PS3, and PS4, but if we ignore the 60 gig fat PS3, you can't play any of those versions on different consoles. You've got to keep rebuying Sonic 1. I can yell at Sega all day to re-release Sonic Adventure, but over on Xbox, you can already play all the stuff I'm demanding. The 360 gave us a bunch of Dreamcast and even Saturn remasters. Sonic Adventure 1, Sonic Adventure 2, Crazy Taxi, Jet Set Radio, Nights into Dreams. You can even play the original Panzer Dragoon as an unlockable within Panzer Dragoon Auto. And this is better than the remake. In fact, 360 had so many legacy releases. Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Unlike the PS4 version, which is based on the PSP release, this is the PS1 version, complete with the original voice acting. We've also got Guardian Heroes, an awesome Saturn game. Soul Calibur 2 HD, which had both the Xbox and PS2 exclusive characters. Sonic the Fighters, baby! Radiant Silver Gun, one of the best games ever made. That 2.5D Rocket Knight remake. Zone of the Enders HD. A lot of this stuff either never came to Xbox or predated Xbox, and it's so cool that utilizing another system's legacy library bolsters Xbox One and series, which on their own also have legacy stuff, like Doom and Final Fantasy 7 and 8 and 9 and 10 and 12 and the Resident Evil remake. Putting all these legacy lineups together, and you have something incredibly special. Resident Evil in particular has the 360 version of Co-Veronica, which unlike the PS2 Classics version available on PS4, this is a full remaster, with new lighting and a bunch of other improvements. And Operation Raccoon City is compatible too! Cool! How did I find someone who's playing this? And Rayman Legends is the only entry on modern platforms, but Xbox has not only Origins, which in many ways I prefer to Legends, but it also has the HD version of Rayman 3. Rad as heck! Hardcore Uprising is another really cool one. It isn't called Contra, but it has the Contra theme and it's made by Konami. It pretty much is Contra. It's fantastic. 
You could get an Xbox and outright ignore all new releases, and I think still have an incredible time with this system. It's just outright one of my favourite places to play games. Not only for the convenience of having them all in one place, but also quick resume. You can stop Final Fantasy VII mid-fight and be like, man, let's try Final Fantasy VIII. And then go, actually, I don't know what a GF is or how to get one, let's do nine, nine rules. Actually, I love seven. Or in Sonic Adventure 2, you can skate down San Francisco and be like, what if San Francisco really existed? And BAM! Flight Simulator! And that's not even mentioning Game Pass, which offers a ton of backwards compatible games. The EA Play stuff has stuff like Dead Space, Mirror's Edge, Dragon Age, Plants vs. Zombies, and Pegging. And from the Xbox side, you've got all the rare games, Perfect Dark, Conquer, Blast Core, and who can forget Blinks? Microsoft can, the trademark expired. There's just something so elegant from sliding in a disc I've owned for two decades and having it just work. I mean, sure, it downloads a file now, it doesn't just automatically work, but it's still so cool. There's been great new games like Halo Infinite and Forza Horizon 5 and Flight Sim, but backwards compatibility is the real star of the show. But with that said, Jet Set Radio Future is still not backwards compatible and that is a crime. Let this game live again! What's on offer here is fantastic, but it is a big shame the program has seemingly ended, as there's still a bunch of games I'd love to play, especially on the OG Xbox. I mean, Puyo Puyo Fever! Let me play it! But regardless, I appreciate the work that's been done. There are so many games to play, and the fact that many of them are enhanced to the level of actual remasters is astonishing. That said, we're going back to Blinks. Blinks the Time Sweeper, fully compatible, but Blinks 2, Masters of Time and Space, is not. Phil, I know you're watching this. Do what is right. Do it for Blinks.